Okay then my friends, I think we've covered a fair amount about how to make unit tests for functions now and I thought it might be a good idea to practice what you've learned so far. So I've come up with a little challenge for you in this video, which is to write unit tests for a couple of brand new functions I've made. So I'm going to walk you through the functions now and then I'll leave you to write a couple of test cases for each one. The first one then is a function called shuffle inside a file called shuffle.js in the source folder. And all this function does is take in a cards argument, which should be an array of card objects, and it shuffles them up using this shuffling algorithm. Now the algorithm in itself isn't really important and it would take me a whole lesson in itself to explain this algorithm. And if you do want to learn about algorithms, by the way, then I've got a whole algorithms masterclass course, which I will leave the link to down below the video. Anyway, what's important is that it takes in this array of cards and it shuffles them. So the order becomes random and then it returns those shuffled cards. Now I've prepped a test file for this function inside the test folder called shuffle.test.js. And inside that file, I've already imported a few things you'll need like the three vtest functions and these two functions here as well. I've also set up a new test suite right here for the function and I fleshed out the bare bones of a couple of test cases. So the first one is to test that it randomizes the order of an array of cards. And inside this, I've already invoked this create cards function to get a standard array of cards that you can pass into the shuffle one when you test it. Now, technically, because we're bringing a couple of functions together in this test, like the create cards one plus the shuffle one that you're going to be testing, then we're slightly wandering into the realms of integration testing, which test how multiple moving parts of an application work together. But we know that this create cards function works and it produces a very predictable set of cards. So we can still kind of unit test the shuffle function reliably using this. Anyway, the next one down here says it does not change the length of the array. And again, I've already created the cards to pass into the array. So these are the tests that you can try making for the shuffle function. The next function is one called deal and that's inside the deal.js file back in the source folder. And this function takes in three arguments, an array of cards, a hand size and the number of players. Inside the function, we create an array of hands where each hand is also an array. And then we iterate the cards up to the hand size and push a new card from the cards array onto each hand. Then at the end, we return those hands, which again should be an array of arrays where each subarray represents a single hand containing X amount of cards, depending on the hand size that we pass in. So X would be the hand size, right? And the number of hands should match the number of players that we take in. So again, we don't need to focus too much on the logic behind the function, just that it takes in these three inputs and returns an array of hands at the end where each hand is an array in itself of cards. The test file for this function then is inside the test folder and it's called deal.test.js. Inside that file, I've set things up the same way, importing everything you need and fleshing out the bare bones of a couple of test cases. The first one says it deals the correct number of hands. And again, I've already made the array of cards that we can pass into the deal function right here. You just need to invoke that deal function with X number of players and assert it returns X number of hands to match. The next one says it deals each hand the correct number of cards. So again, you can use these cards to pass into the deal function along with a specific hand size. And then you need to assert that any given hand has that number of cards in the return value. Now you can grab this challenge starter code by coming to the GitHub repo for the course, which I will leave the link to down below the video. And then just make sure the lesson 10 challenge branch is selected from this dropdown. Then you can just download a zip of the starter code by hitting the code button here and choosing to download a zip. So pause the video, give this a good go, and then press play again when you wanna see my solution. All right then, so I'm gonna start with this shuffle function right here. So we're gonna test those. And the first of these test cases says, it randomizes the order of an array of cards. So what do we wanna do here? What do we wanna assert? Well, we wanna check that the order of the cards, the original cards that we create, is not gonna be the same order as the shuffled cards. So at least one of the shuffled cards should be in a different place, two really, because if one swaps, then two have to swap. But these cards are all gonna be in order, like ace, then two, then three, then four, for each of these suits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a copy of these cards by saying const, and then original order, 
and we'll set that equal to a copy of the card. So we'll just spread them out. And that's so we've got something to compare to after we've shuffled the cards. Then we're going to call that shuffle function and store the result in shuffled. So we'll set that equal to uh, shuffle, which we imported up here. And we pass in the cards, right? Okay, so now we've got two arrays of cards. We've got this shuffled one with a different order, hopefully, and this original order of cards right here. So we need to somehow kind of compare those or at least compare the position of one of them to make sure it's not in the same position. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter the shuffled cards now. Let me just paste this in, in fact, and then I'm going to explain the code. So what I'm doing is checking for cards in the same position. So we create a new constant called same positions and it's a filtered array. So we take the shuffled one, which are all different positions, hopefully, and then we use the filter method on it. And for each item in that shuffled array, we fire a function. We take in the card and the index and we return this expression. So either true or false, right? Now, if the card is the same card as the one in the original order at position I, we return true. And therefore, it's going to be inside the same positions array. So any cards that are in the same position in the shuffled one as the original one, are going to be in this new filtered array, same positions, right? So basically, as long as this is not 52 in length, it means there has been some shuffling of some kind, because if one of them is different, then it must have been shuffled. So all we need to do is assert that this right here has less than 52 cards in it, because if it has less than 52 cards, at least one or two of the cards have been shuffled. So I'm going to come down here and I will say expect and we'll pass in the same positions and then we'll take the length of that. Oops, not caps. And then we will say that this should be less than, so to be less than 52. All right. So then if I save this now, I'm going to open this test file up and I shall just refresh over here to catch any new tests. We've got this one here, so we're going to play all these. And it says, all right, shuffle is not defined. We need to change this to be shuffle. Save that and rerun the tests like so. And we can see that passes. Awesome. So it has been shuffled. All right, so let's move on to this next one down here where it says it does not change the length of the array. So the original cards array should be 52 in length. And well, the shuffled cards array should be 52 in length. So let me now just copy this thing right here where we get the shuffled cards and paste in here. And then down here, I will expect that the shuffled cards should have a length of 52. So to have length, and that's gonna be 52. So if we save this now and rerun the tests, hopefully, yep, yeah, everything is working, awesome. Okay, so we've created the test for that shuffle file now let us do the same thing for the other file. Let's go back over here and look for uh, the deal. This is the one. And we'll open up the deal function as well. Okay. Okay, so this first one says it deals the correct number of hands. Okay, so we have the cards already and now we need to invoke the function. So remember this function actually returns this hands array. So we need to check the length of that array because each one of those subarrays is a particular hand, right? And it needs to match the number of players that we pass in. So let us now say const hands is equal to the deal function, which we'll invoke. We'll pass in the cards and then we will pass in five for the hand size. So that means each hand has five cards and then three for the number of players. Now, since we have three numbers of players, we would expect the length of this hands array to be three, right? Because there should be three hands. So let's come down here to make the assertion and we'll say expect, we'll pass in hands and then we'll say to have length and it's gonna be three. All right, save that, come over here and I'm going to come to this deal test right here and run these and yet yeah, that passes, awesome. All right, so let's come to the next one. And that says it deals each hand the correct number of cards. So we have the cards already again. And we want to make sure that the number of cards in each hand 
is the same as the hand size that we pass in. So then let's invoke the deal function again. I'm going to say const hands is equal to deal and then we'll pass in the cards and then we'll say seven this time for the hand size. So each player gets seven cards in their hand and then four for the number of players. All right, so now I'm just gonna paste in these assertions so you don't have to watch me writing these from scratch. And we expect that each hand, so the first hand, the second, the third, and the fourth, and there's four hands, remember, because there's four players. We expect each of those to have a length of seven, seven cards in each one, right? Now, if I save this, and run the test again, we can see it passes, which is awesome. And I just wanna show you that this will fail if I put six in here, save this again and run the test. Yep, we can see it fails now. And the failure is right here. It says seven is not equal to six. All right, so let's change that back to seven and save it just so that everything passes again. Awesome. All right then my friends, so hopefully that was a good bit of practice for you. And if you didn't manage to fully get there, then no worries. It takes time to learn how to construct these tests and know what methods to use, but keep practicing, you will get there. Anyway, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about something called mock functions.